absolutely bloody freezing. Hiya, this is the last part of my Scottish Borders mini road trip, which kicked off with a wild camp at the Grey Mare's Tail waterfall. Just me and the sheep in stunning surroundings. Before driving on to visit St Mary's Lock and the Lock of the Lows, where I saw the statue of James Hogg, before a short but steep walk up to an ancient burial ground with views overlooking the lock, and spending my second night at Melrose campsite, before spending a rainy day exploring the home and grounds of Abbotsford House, the home of Sir Walter Scott. So it was my last day and somewhere I wanted to see was a place that's been described as one of the most striking heritage landmarks in the Scottish borders. It's Lederfoot or Lederfoot Viaduct, also known as Dry Grange Viaduct. As I left the campsite though, I discovered a stowaway on board. And like me, he wasn't happy. As soon as I could, I pulled over and told him to buzz off. Turned out nice again. There are a number of walking routes that start from this point, and there's a map of places of interest. I had considered visiting Melrose Abbey but it's surrounded by safety fencing at the moment, so I'll do that next time. It's interesting to see the three different crossings, and there will have been an earlier Roman crossing linked to the fort nearby. The viaduct was built between 1862 and 1865 for Berwickshire Railway. fancied visiting this place and it was about 65 miles from where I was so I was heading towards Dumfries and Galloway through a few rain showers but then the sun really shone. Turn left onto the B712. It was a very straightforward drive on A roads but that's boring so I decided to take a scenic route and see what it had to offer. terrible quality, but if you know, please leave me a comment. The road was really flooded in places. I hadn't realised just how much rain we'd had. But I was chilled away and took it slowly. 
Thankfully, it didn't get any worse than this. Turn right onto Bathwood Road. I can't wait to turn right. sleepy village of Leadhills, the second highest village in Scotland, with a long history in lead mining until around the 1930s. The village itself is actually designated an ancient monument. According to Leadhills Online, its mining legacy includes the oldest subscription library in the world, which helped to foster self-improvement for villagers. Apparently too, there be gold in them there allow the hills, around Lead Hills and One Lockhead. And finally I arrived, after a many hour scenic adventure. In a quarter of a mile, turn right onto Mance Road. The first thing that hits you, well hit me, when I pulled into this village, is the unspoilt nature of it. It's like driving back in time, back to the days of the mining. There are reminders everywhere. The village is situated near to the head of the Menock Pass, which is another tourist attraction for the scenic drive that it offers. If I'd had more time here, I'd probably have headed that way the next morning. Maybe next time. For now though, it was time to let the pub folk know that I was here for my pub stop for the night. How, how do you know what's up? You haven't asked me what's up. And the least I could do was give them some custom. Mm -hmm. you get away? No, you're alright, don't <laughs> worry. I'm just, uh, there's a lot to see, isn't there? Uh -huh. Coming up years and I see something different on the Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, Bri. To you. If Bri could see me now, alone in a biker's pub, in a remote village, in my little van, with a burger and a beer, God, I wish he could. So fed and watered, I returned to the van, and that's when the fun began. Right, so... I'm at the highest pub in Scotland. It's forecast to drop to, I think, around zero tonight. Um, and my diesel heater isn't working. I've got an error code on it. Um, I do have a backup electric heater. However, I don't have the battery power really to to use that I suppose I could bring it in and keep giving it the odd burst to take the edge off but I don't know how much I don't know I really need to get myself sorted for off-grid camping a lot better than I am so these are my gym jams for tonight I'm nice and toasty warm and I'm going to get in my sleeping bag Um so I know I'll be fine, it won't be too cold. Say what? It won't be too cold, it won't be too cold, it won't be too cold. It would just have been nicer to have my diesel heater on. So I'll have to get that fixed when I get back. Probably something or nothing. Um, it's a planar diesel heater and it's an error code 15. So um, even if I could find out what it was, I I won't be playing around with it, so I'll just wait till I get home. I'm going home tomorrow. So uh, this is my last night. 
it's been a great, really great four days. Um, so I thought, oh, yeah, I'll come to the highest village and pub in Scotland, see what it's like. So I might get another little look round before I head off tomorrow. Um, the weather forecast is really good for tomorrow. It was good today as well. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to hunker down um, and read a book, I think. I'll see you in the morning. It won't be too cold. It won't be too cold. Morning. Absolutely. Bloody freezing. That has to be, that has to have been the most uncomfortable, <laughs> coldest night I've spent in the van so far. Of all times for it to happen, I'm at one of the coldest inhabited areas in the UK, apparently. I know that because I was reading up on the place while I was led in bed last night, shivering my watsits off. Look, you can see my breath. I've always been easily distracted. Uh, as a child, I was never allowed to sit next to a window at primary school because I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, I'm doing it. Um, so I've learnt a few things there. One, keep a water bottle on board just in case everything packs up because to have cuddled up to that last night would have been a godsend um, two don't run out of milk when you want tea and coffee couldn't even enjoy a nice warm drink three get yourself sorted properly for wild camping off grid camping so it's a luxury to have my uh, hob going for a black coffee even though I don't particularly like them it's going to warm me up a bit um, but I can't have that going all night <laughs> I'll be dead from fumes whereas hypothermia is much more appealing <sighs> just I'm going to have a coffee but you know weirdly I've still really enjoyed myself <laughs> I was led there freezing thinking why am I doing this because I love it I just love being in the van. I love being in different places when I wake up. I love learning all the time, you know. I'd obviously got too reliant on the diesel heater where well, you can't rely on just one heat source because issues happen all the time with camper vans. Um, so yeah, cold, but fine. I live to face another day. Right, I'm having another coffee. It's about my gazillion this morning, just to keep warm. See you in a bit. Earlier in the week, I dissed the idea of having porridge for my breakfast. Now, after last night, look at hair, I haven't done anything yet. After last night, oh, it's a godsend, lovely and warming. Never diss the porridge. Mm. 